Hello everyone, we are going to see about a great Jesuit poet today. His name was Father Gerald Manley Hopkins. Father Gerald Manley Hopkins was born in 1844 in Essex, England. He studied classics at Balliol College, Oxford between the years 1863 to 7, where he struck up a significant lifelong friendship with Robert Bridges the eventual poet laureate of the UK. So he had also regular correspondence with him throughout his lifetime. So Hopkins, during his early years at Oxford, he studied with the prestigious critic Walter Pater, who first tutored him in 1866, and who remained a friend of Hopkins until he left Oxford in September 1879. And during that time, many of the Anglicans, so he belonged, he was an Anglican, many of the Anglicans felt a great attraction to the Catholicism. This eventually led to his conversion. During his time in the college, he encountered a certain poet known as Digby Macworth Tolban, with whom also he felt a great attraction and special friendship and this person was also greatly attracted to the Catholic culture that he used to go in the uh, habit of monks of Saint Benedict. Definitely he must have inspired him too. And but this Dolben that this poet, this young poet died at the age of 19 by drowning. And it definitely gave a great effect on Father Hopkins's existence. It led a great deal of stress and pain, emotional pain in his heart throughout his life. Hopkins, or Father Hopkins, was a committed Christian and eventually he converted to the Roman Catholic faith. He found his identity in Catholicism and he began his novitiate in the Society of Jesus in UK in 1868. So after that, he took the usual vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So it is also said that though he loved writing poetry, he was so much obedient to his superiors. It is said that at one place he wrote, write no more unless it were by the wish of my superiors. So many of the poetry also he has burned, which he had written without the vow of obedience. And he would not write any poems until 1875. So after nine years in the training, Hopkins was ordained as a Jesuit priest in 1877. So he spent the next 17 years working in London, Oxford, Liverpool and Glasgow. In 1884, he became professor of Greek and Latin at the University College, Dublin. So he has also encountered new forms of poetry, which was mentioned as a great gift to the English poetry. Let us see his poetic style now. So his poetry was radically different from his contemporaries and he experimented with new forms of rhythm. And it is also said that he invented new words for himself. So automatically when something new comes, people would be mistrusting of it and his poetry was not published during his lifetime. His poems were often in praise of God or the natural world. He believed that by contemplating nature in his poetry, he was in turn contemplating and celebrating God's power and greatness. In 1874, while studying theology in North Wales, he learned Welsh and later adapted the rhythms of Welsh poetry to create what he called a sprung rhythm. This is something very much unique of his poetry. So let us see what happened at the later stage of his so all his poetry reveals something, uh, a certain concept known as instress. Instress was a creative experience that occurred when the essential inner quality of the things were examined 
to reveal the divine in nature. The use of instress was designed to create a poetic form which mirrored the overt richness and complexity of nature. Hawkins called the unique essential quality of things found in the experience of instress as inscape. So you can you can imagine the depth of this poet of this poetic heart. So in 1889, just five years after being appointed professor of classics at UCD, Hopkins died from typhoid. After his death, Robert Bridges helped to publish and promote his friend's work, editing a volume of Hopkins poems that first appeared in 1918. Dear friends, we should note here that when he was alive, his poetry wasn't received much. But after his death, it received a posthumous uh, recognition and he remains one of the greatest poet in the English literature. So some of his listed selected poems are The Wreck of the Deutschland, The Main Magnificant, The Moonrise, The Spring, God's Tranto, The Cage Skylot, etc. and etc. So at this moment here, we need to note here that being a religious being is not just not the only one vocation, there is a vocation within a vocation. And this Jesuit priest, this wonderful Jesuit priest has made that possible. He was not just a Jesuit, he realized his vocation also as a poet. So let us ask what God wants from us. And let us now say a prayer for his soul at this day of his death. We say, eternal rest grant unto his soul, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. We will, we will also pray for the soul of his beloved friend who drowned when he was only 19 years old. That Hopkins, for his soul also, we will pray eternal rest grant unto his soul, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. So many of the content are based on an article by Charlotte Barrett. I thank and I acknowledge them here. Just keep them also in your prayers. May God bless you all. Amen.